Hi, it's Katrina. Sometimes valuable treasures disappear seemingly into thin air, never to be seen again, despite continuous searches by ambitious treasure hunters. From golden eggs worth tens of millions of dollars to entire ships full of lost history, here are eight valuable lost treasures that nobody can find. Number 8. The Lost Dutchman Mine as he lay on his deathbed in 1891, German immigrant Jacob Waltz, nicknamed the Dutchman, revealed some astonishing information to a few friends. There was a motherload of high-quality gold hidden deep in the Superstition Mountains outside Phoenix, Arizona. The ailing 83-year-old described the treasure's complicated location to his friends and showed them some glistening ore samples in a candle box underneath his bed. Since then, people have searched tirelessly for the lost Dutchman mine, but nobody has found it, including Waltz's bedside confidants. Several treasure seekers lost their lives among the treacherously steep cliffs and in the unforgiving heat and cold of the Superstition Mountains. Even with modern technology, people have succumbed to the harsh conditions, often after falling or becoming disoriented and getting lost. Magnetic rocks prevent compasses from working properly, and good luck getting a cell phone signal! Some gold hunters made the fatal mistake of searching alone. In 2009, Jesse Capen of Denver, Colorado took a month off from his day job as a bellhop to look for the Lost Dutchman mine. Three years later, his skeletal remains were discovered at the bottom of a 180-foot cliff. If the Lost Dutchman mine exists, its contents are exorbitantly valuable as evidenced by the quality of the samples Waltz gave to his friends, which were sold, made into jewelry, and fashioned into a matchbook case. Former treasure seeker and Superstition Mountain Lost Dutchman Museum employee George Jostin explained the gold's worth in a 2016 interview, stating, If a mine produces 2.5 ounces of gold per ton of rock, it is a bonanza, while the Dutchman's gold ore that made that matchbook case assayed out to 50 ounces per ton. No wonder people risk their lives in the hope of finding it. Number 7. The Amber Room The Amber Room was constructed using several tons of amber in the early 18th century for Friedrich I, the first king of Prussia. He gifted it to Peter the Great in 1716 as a symbol of peace between Prussia and Russia. It was shipped to St. Petersburg and installed at the Winter Palace. Then, in 1755, the Amber Room was relocated to the Catherine Palace in Pushkin per the orders of Tsarina Elizabeth. The 180-square-foot room contained six tons of amber and other semi-precious stones, including amber panels backed by gold leaf. Altogether, the room was worth over $142 million in today's money. When Operation Barbarossa commenced in June 1941, three million Nazi soldiers invaded the Soviet Union and looted tens of thousands of art treasures, including the Amber Room. The contents were reinstalled in Konigsberg's museum castle on the Baltic coast in modern-day Kaliningrad. The Amber Room was dismantled and put into storage in 1943 per the instructions of the museum's director, Alfred Rode. The castle was destroyed the following year during an Allied bombing raid. Some historians believe that the Amber Room's contents were destroyed along with the castle. However, other theories hold that the crates are still somewhere in Kaliningrad or that the items are sitting at the bottom of the Baltic Sea. One far-flung hypothesis posits that the real Amber Room still exists and that the Germans were tricked into stealing replicas. One of the room's mosaic panels was recovered in 1997 from the son of a deceased German soldier who was trying to sell it. However, he was unaware of the panel's origin, so he said, and the investigation ended there. The rest of the Amber Room has not been found. Number 6. Romanov Jewels and Jewel Catalogs after the 1917 Russian Revolution, rumors swirled about the disappearance of the overthrown and recently executed Romanov family's $500 million collection of jewels. In 1925, the People's Commissariat of Finances published a four-book catalog of the Romanov gems, entitled Russia's Treasure of Diamonds and Precious Stones. Also known as the Fersman Editions, the catalog seemed like an assertion that the supposedly lost Romanov treasures were still in Russian hands. However, not long after the books were published, all volumes disappeared, supposedly because the information within them was thought to compromise the security of the items. Only 20 Fersman editions are believed to still exist. Not only are the catalogs a rare find, however, most of the Romanov jewels themselves remain missing as well. Following the revolution, the newly established socialist state needed money to build their new society with and auctioned off much of the collection. Many of the buyers were European and American millionaires. 
Some jewelry was broken up into smaller pieces and sold discreetly, while some pieces remain in the hands of the Russian government or in private collections. Others are thought to still exist, and some are seemingly lost forever. Many believe that the Romanovs hurriedly buried as much of their treasure as possible prior to being captured and executed. However, the truthfulness of this rumor remains as unknown as most of the collection's whereabouts. And now for number five. But first, if you found a valuable treasure, what would you do with it? Would you hide it? Pass it on to your family? Report it? Let me know in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on more videos like these. Number five, Flor de la Mar. The Flor de la Mar, or Flower of the Sea, was a 400-ton Portuguese carrack that sank in the Strait of Malacca in 1511 with a vast amount of treasure on board. It was built in 1502 and at the time was considered one of the world's largest and most beautiful carracks. The Flor de la Mar made two trading voyages to India from Portugal before stopping in Mozambique for repairs and remaining there for nearly a year. It was also used for battle, and in 1511, a Portuguese fleet of ships, including the Flor de la Mar, set out from Malacca on a voyage of conquest. Following the successful expedition, the Flor de la Mar was loaded with plundered booty and began sailing back to Portugal in November of 1511. The ship was difficult to maneuver when loaded to maximum capacity, however, and had endured numerous repairs over the years, so in other words, its seaworthiness was questionable. It sank about a month later after getting caught in a storm, breaking in two and being destroyed by rough waves. One report claims that much of the treasure was salvaged, but like other allegations revolving around the Flor de la Mar, it remains unproven. Numerous people claim to have found the wreck, but these assertions also remain unproven due to a lack of irrefutable evidence, and because if someone did find it, they would probably keep it a secret. So the Flor de la Mar and its treasure hoard are still considered missing. Number four. Imperial Fabergé Eggs Between 1886 and 1916, a series of 50 imperial Easter eggs were created for the royal Romanov family by renowned Russian jeweler Peter Karl Fabergé. Each egg is unique, containing components made out of valuable materials such as diamonds, pearls, and gold. The creation of Fabergé eggs stopped with the overthrow of the Romanovs in 1916. 42 of them came into the ownership of museums and private collections, while eight went missing. In 2015, the third imperial egg was discovered by an anonymous man from the American Midwest. Unaware of its intrinsic value, he planned to scrap the ornament and hoped to make $500 from it, only to discover that the gold would be worth less than he expected when melted down. In a last-ditch effort to determine the egg's origin, the frustrated man, who was financially strapped, conducted a Google search and found a 2011 article about the missing egg, which was valued at an estimated $33 million. It had been last seen in a 1964 auction catalog. After confirming the egg's authenticity, he sold it to a private collector, and I think it's safe to assume his financial worries came to an end. There are still seven eggs missing, five of which are thought to have been destroyed because they were never mentioned after the Russian Revolution. The whereabouts of the two suspected surviving eggs are unknown. Check your attics, people! Number 3. Sarcophagus of Menkaure The smallest of the three Great Pyramids of Giza belonged to the pharaoh Menkaure. During the 1830s, English military officer Howard Weiss explored the 4,500-year-old pyramids. Weiss discovered an ornate three-ton basalt sarcophagus in a lower chamber of Menkaure's pyramid. The brown and blue sarcophagus contained no inscriptions, hieroglyphics, or body. Its broken lid was found in an upper chamber along with a wooden graffiti-covered coffin inscribed with Menkaure's cartouche, or signature. There were remains in the coffin, but they didn't belong to Menkaure, and the design on the coffin's lid wasn't period-appropriate for when the pharaoh died, around 2500 BC. Menkaure's remains were never found, but Weiss wanted to preserve what was left of the pharaoh's legacy. He attempted to ship the assembly to England aboard the merchant ship Beatrice in 1838, but it never reached the British Museum as intended. After stopping in Malta, the Beatrice encountered a storm and sank in the Mediterranean Sea, taking the sarcophagus to the sea floor with it. The wreck of Beatrice was never found, as nobody's figured out exactly where it is. Even its surviving crew members couldn't remember where the ship sank. Funnily enough, the sarcophagus is an Egyptian artifact located in Spanish waters aboard a British ship, and if it's ever recovered, an ownership dispute will likely ensue. Not to mention, the ship's insurance company might also become involved, so may the force be with you on this one to whoever ends up finding it. Number 2. Hanjo Masamune Sword 
Goro Nayudo Masamune was a renowned Japanese master swordsmith who lived from 1264 to 1343 AD. He created the Honjo Masamune Sword, which was named after the hero Honjo Shigenaga after a 16th century battle. Masamune gave the sword to Honjo as a gift. It then came into the possession of the first shogun of Japan, Tokugawa Ieyasu, and was passed down through the family until the end of World War II, when it was seized by U.S. authorities during the American occupation of Japan. The Honjo Masamune sword hasn't been seen since, and there are several possibilities for what may have happened to it. Perhaps it was destroyed by American soldiers, along with other confiscated Japanese weapons. Or maybe someone held onto it and brought it back to the U.S. It might be hidden away and passed on in someone's family. But if that's the case, no one is probably coming forward anytime soon. So for the moment, it remains lost. Number 1. Irish Crown Jewels The Crown Jewels of Ireland consisted of a jeweled star of the Order of St. Patrick, a diamond brooch, and five gold collars, collectively valued at $20 million in today's money. They were not linked to the monarchy, but to the elite aristocratic Order of St. Patrick, which was founded in 1783. On July 6, 1907, the collection was stolen from Dublin Castle. It remains missing and is one of Ireland's biggest unsolved mysteries, and a huge mystery in general, very Pink Panther. The jewels were well guarded by the staff, including a round-the-clock outdoor patrol of police and soldiers. Sir Arthur Vickers, the Ulster King of Arms, who was entrusted with the safekeeping of the jewels, was reportedly not very protective of them. According to one story, he got drunk one night and handed one of his two sets of keys over to his friends, who dressed him up in the items while he was passed out. The day the jewels went missing, the door to the safe room was found wide open, with the keys to the inner door left dangling in the lock. For whatever reason, nobody thought much of it until later that night, when Vickers dispatched a messenger to the safe and it was found empty. Authorities strongly suspected that the theft was an inside job, but found no hard evidence tying any suspects to the crime, including Vickers. His second-in-command, Francis Shackleton, remains a top suspect to this day, along with an English gentleman named Francis Bennett Goldney, who held a junior position to the Ulster King of Arms. Following Goldney's death, a trove of stolen goods were found in his home. However, none of them were the Irish crown jewels, and the mystery remains unsolved. Thanks for watching! Remember to keep an eye out for these treasures. You never know where they might turn up. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye!